Welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. In today's lesson, we'll look at Allegro in F by Joseph Haydn. take a look at the piece in general. After the initial hearing, you probably have figured out that this is in ternary form, with a brief coda. In the first A section, the main theme forms the first phrase. Then the phrase is repeated, with a slight alteration in the second part of the phrase. The section begins with the same rhythmic motif as the beginning phrase, but repeated twice. In short, two little two bar phrases. Then a series of descending two note slurs. Then an octave higher like an echo, followed by another series of two note slurs played by the right hand and accompanied by the left hand chords. Here we have the return of the A section. However, this time the second phrase is different from the first time. The coda has the same thematic material from the first phrase, but only in snippets. After an overview of the sections and phrase structure of Haydn's Allegro and F, Let's take a closer look at how Haydn developed one motivic theme throughout the piece. The main theme, which consists of a two-note slur, and a series of eight notes in staccatos, followed by a twist and turn 16-note passage. Haydn was very fond of taking one theme and developing that theme in many different ways throughout the piece. For example, in measure 7, Haydn took a snippet of the main theme, the 16 note passage here, and reshape it in measure 7. At the beginning of the B section, the first part of the main theme is reused, using the same rhythms but different pitches at a lower register. writing here suggests that this section sounds like chamber music, as each voice is played by a different instrument. Be sure to bring out the top melody. The brilliance here is that even though the rhythm motif is the same, the material sounds different. Haydn then uses the two-note slur motif from the beginning of the piece throughout the rest of the B section, most of the times descending in different intervals. Other times ascending.
sometimes the intervals stay the same, but the articulation changes. When the A section returns, it begins exactly the same as the first A section. But in the second part, Haydn decides to bring the register down and ascend from there with a crescendo to create a climax. The coda is essentially taken from the last part of the main theme. Then spun out into a series of short snippets of ascending eighth notes on the left hand and double notes on the right hand in different registers. Again, you can think of these changes in register as change in instrument. The lower register can be think of as a low instrument, such as a bassoon. High register may be the flute. Haydn ends with the left hand octave and the right hand core. With a grin ending. Think of this ending as the whole ensemble orchestra playing together. Review and practice what we talked about in lesson today. See you next time.